how are you guys? Sarah here. I hope you guys are doing good and I hope you guys enjoy the next three weeks of your holidays being that right now I'm currently in a semester break. So what are you guys gonna do for the next three weeks? Hmm, well for me, I think I'm gonna get back to reading, you know, like fictional readings to catch up on uh, and this would be a good time to show you uh, what I got from the Big Bad Wolf sale. What a big wet bat wolf seal actually is, it's a yearly event, happened around like late December where you have amazing book bargains, as low as 2 ringgit and I think the most expensive one I found was about 45, so that's, that's cheap, you know, in our money. The purpose of this video is I'm gonna show you what I got and hopefully I'll be having a good time reading this and if I have read almost all, inshallah, I'll post up my reviews, maybe we'll see how it goes and uh, also this video will be divided into two sections uh, the first one will be those that I bought in uh, paperback and the second one will be the ones under hardcover so the first book that I got uh, actually turned out to be a tricklet and it's none other by it's called by my Bollywood wedding it's written by Rekha Wahid you know what's interesting is um, this is under the little black dress uh, publications you know it's a publication house where you where they have a lot of titles but more so most of them are under the chiclet genre and surprisingly uh, this happens to be my first ever book by that series so it takes place in London and the story revolves around a Muslim Indian girl uh, preparing for the biggest day of her life which happens to be a wedding so I thought you know what is the holidays I might as well uh, pick up something to read for light reading I guess this is about like 344 pages and it was published in the year 2010 you know lately uh, from what I noticed that a lot of the younger generations what pop culture is trying to uh, show us right now especially in the Hollywood and the movie entertainment series is a lot of fantasy romance uh, stories you have Twilight, you have True Blood, you have Vampire Diaries what else? Uh, werewolves related, vampires related but this one somehow, the second book I got uh, turns out to be a little bit different, although you do have the elements of a uh, fantasy romance. This is called Warm Bodies. It's written by Isaac Marion. This one happens to be dealing with zombies, actually. This is quite interesting, really, because uh, it does not deal with the typical uh, zombie films where, you know, they're mindless eating uh, creatures, you know, rotting for brains and such. And it's sort of like a new twist to it. You have the central character, a zombie. His name is called R. So we don't know what the full name of that is. I first heard of this book because there's actually a movie coming out. Maybe if I could, I'll put the link uh, to the trailer and maybe show you guys. I will read this in time. And by the time the movie comes out, I'll seek some comparisons because, I don't know, I like comparing because you really can't judge a book by its movie, right? This book is about 239 pages and also it was published in the year 2010. Uh, I think I would probably look very forward to reading this one because it's more contemporary and more young adult uh, related and something I guess I would probably enjoy. Okay, the third book under paperback that I picked up falls under the classic classical readings. Uh, it is none other by The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Surprisingly, it's only about 184 and it was published in uh, 1926. And if you are a history buff like I am, we all know that that is the year of the Roaring Twenties. That is the most prosperous time in America. You have the jazz ages, you know, being born and coming full into life. You have famous writers like Fitzgerald and Ernest Hemingway, uh, T.S. Eliot, uh, I'm an English major so of course I know a thing or two about them and you have Flapper Girls, uh, Chicago, the musical and of course the Prohibition era there were mafias like real life mafias uh, such as uh, Al Capone and oh if you know that movie, uh, what's it called? Um, Public Enemies. That was also taken in the 1920s era, so I really really like that period, periodical history in the time of America. There's also going to be a movie coming out from this, and it's directed by Baz Luhrmann. He's an amazing director. I know almost all his works. He directed Moulin Rouge, uh, Australia, uh, what else? Romeo and Juliet. So the 
the actor playing Jay Gatsby, the central character of this book, is none other than Leonardo DiCaprio himself. Again, I will post the link below in the comment sections or whatever. Uh, and hopefully, you know, I will read this book by the time the movie comes out. Okay, uh, fourth book is also related to Fitzgerald. However, this one, my mom kind of picked it up for me. And as you notice, it's actually quite thick. Uh, this is called Dreams of Youth. And it's actually a compilation. Can you see that? It's actually the compilation of the letters of F. Scott Fitzgerald. It spans over 30 years. Uh, someone must have gotten all of his uh, letters that he has written in correspondence to his friends, to his wife Zelda, to his fellow writer peers such as Hemingway again. And I guess this is probably the closest thing to an autobiography that uh, Scott Fitzgerald has ever written himself. So. Um, this one here so you have uh, Zelda over there his wife and I think a uh, Hemingway a well-known uh, writer during that time so in order to understand him better I guess uh, I could read some of his letters you know you could see a side to him that we never really know despite his uh, great work which happens to be the great Gatsby there are uh, certain problems that he might have faced especially with his wife so yeah, uh, this is sort of like an autobiographical book. Um, I'm looking forward to reading this too as well. Okay, moving on. Uh, my next book is... <laughs> uh, Love, Sex, Death and Words. Now, don't get too excited by the title. What this intrigued me is it's not exactly a fictional book. It's more under non-fictional. There's a selection of anecdotes of what happened in the year of in the world of literature, in the world of uh, politics in the western era back at the time. So for every one day of the year, they would write out what something that significantly happened on that year. Uh, some are historical, many are quite literary, so if you are familiar with the literary authors, you could find a thing or two under this book and what on what day happened. What, uh, for example, which day was this certain book published? Which day uh, th this famous uh, author died or born or what happened? Uh, something significant in his or her life. I'll read out uh, an example to you. 23rd April. This is famously known as the Death of Poets Day. Now, how is that possible? Two of the few surviving facts of, about Shakespeare's life are that he was born and died on the same day of the year, which is 23rd April. That was the year, uh, 23rd April 1564. That was the year he was born. And then on 23rd April 1616, the day he died. Uh, there's a lot more actually for the anecdotes. So in case you want to find out what exactly happened on your birthday, you could tell me and then I could probably tell you what exactly happened. Uh, this one actually falls under it's actually a modern classic and this is called the crucible written by arthur miller uh it was it's i guess it's probably the thinnest book but it's not like that will make any difference uh, written in 1953 this book contains about 126 pages now uh the reason i bought this book is previous semester uh, i took american literature and uh, my lecturer actually mentioned this book so when i found happened to stumble upon this at the big bad wolf sale i just had to have it uh, because it deals with the uh the salem witch hunt uh, that took place in the years of the puritans the early settlers of america the moment i opened this book it turned out to be written in a play rather than a narrative fiction you have acts you have uh, stanzas you have there's about like four or five X, four X. So if you want to know what it's actually like here, you know, it's kind of like written more in a dialogue. So I didn't know about that, you know, I thought it was just a written story tale. So yeah, um, you know, the thing about with the this book, it deals with the madness of our superstition, paranoia, and uh, malice and such. So I'm kind of like interested in all of the dark and twisted details of what happened during the Salem Witch Hunt and all because of two little girls who happen to have a bit of a spasm in their behavior and they call it, oh, possession of the devil. Awful times during that day. Moving on to the final book 
also another classic I can't seem to get enough of classics and I think this is the one that most of you are probably familiar with it is none other by the um, another American author Edgar Allan Poe uh, this is entitled the fall of the house of Usher and it is other writings uh, this is actually a compilation book. Uh, it has its writings, uh, short fictions and uh, poetry and such. Reviews, essays, tales, whatever it is that you are familiar with his works. If you are a big fan of uh, Edgar Allan Poe's works, I highly recommend that you get this book. I'm a big fan of him and I know anybody who knows him obviously knows his works, which is all, um, Quoth the Raven, Nevermore which is under the title, the poem, The Raven. And then, of course, there's the one, these, there's the other suspense storytelling uh, of The Telltale Heart. Uh, maybe I could read you guys a few excerpts, I guess. I don't know if I should. I'm probably be bad at reciting. The Raven. I'll read a thing or two from this title. Maybe I'll read the one that's, that'll get you the most. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting, on the pallid bust of Pallas, just above my chamber door, and his eyes have all the seeing of a demon that is dreaming, and the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor, and my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore. Okay, I think uh, that's about it. Uh, there's a total of... Seven, seven books, and that's only half, so there's a lot of work to do.